Hello, my name is Mrs. Ortiz. I am one of the third grade teachers for the Elements Virtual School. I was actually the age that many of you all are at this time. I was a sixth grader in middle school. My family had just moved from Denver, Colorado out to Burlington, North Carolina. So we were new to the area, getting accustomed to being a part of the South. September 11th of 2001 started off like any other day. Got up, got dressed, had breakfast, and went to school. As the events unfolded that day, I remember being in the gym with my classmates. We had just finished our warm up and stretches and we're sitting on the floor waiting for the next directives from our PE teacher. We noticed several of our teachers and the faculty like running around in the hallway, frantically speaking with each other, giving each other what seemed to be really upsetting news. My PE teacher went out and joined them. And when he returned, he seemed very solemn. He clearly did not like the news that he had heard. The rest of the day was interesting because there was a weirdness, a heaviness hanging um, with our teachers. So we didn't really know what was going on. At the end of the day, our principal asked for us to pray for our nation because the nation was hurting. When my siblings and I got into my mother's car, she explained to us that several planes had crashed into several buildings and that lives had been lost. When we got home, we watched the footage on CNN and they had the replay of the footage where you saw the first tower get hit and you're sitting there watching the smoke rising from it and hearing commentary. And then you see a second plane come in and hit the second tower. My heart sunk watching that because it was very obvious at that moment that it wasn't a mistake. It wasn't an accident. And I think that was the most terrifying thing to realize that something like this had been planned. As a sixth grader, I remember thinking that it was unfair that so many people had experienced something so terrible on what was a normal day. Watching the footage of the towers up in flames, just, it was devastating. As the days continued along after September 11th, you know, we saw footage of families looking for their loved ones, posting flyers, families discovering that their loved ones had been lost. It was also tragic. The only good that came from this terrible event was the fact that our nation, one that is constantly divided, came together and it didn't matter our differences. We all came together to comfort each other, to say, we are not going to let this break us. And that was a powerful thing. I also think the praise and support of our first responders was a very important thing that I had never seen in such an amount before this event. Um, they stepped in to something horrible and did everything in their power to try to lessen the blow and to try to help the families who were hurting. I think 9-11 really did change our world. Um, airport security is insane. Even just the way we feel about our safety. I know for myself before 9-11, I'd seen a lot of terrorism, but most of it was overseas. It hadn't hit as close to home and in this capacity. I thank you all for taking the time to listen to our stories, to hear about how 9-11 impacted us and where we were. It's one of the crazy things when something like this occurs to think where we were and how the world forever changed. My husband and I were in Hawaii with our youngest son, Luke. We were scheduled to um, come home that day uh, from a trip. We had been on a business, I had been on a business trip with him. So on 9-11, we got up super early and we went to the top of a volcano in Hawaii called Haleakala, very popular with the tourists. It's supposed to be the first place to see the sunrise over Hawaii. So we got up at like three in the morning um, to drive to the top of the mountain 
and watch this beautiful sunrise. And lots and lots of people were there. We were, um, you know, listening. I was carrying our baby. He was just a couple weeks, a couple months old. And um, we couldn't figure out people were talking about, you know, flying into um, buildings and all these crazy things. And Mr. Dobson and I couldn't figure out what could they possibly be talking about? Like must be some new movie or something going on. Um, so we enjoyed the sunrise and kind of a peaceful time together. And we got uh, back in the car, turned the radio on. And lo and behold, we heard about the um, airplanes flying into the Twin Towers and the Pentagon. And they didn't know about the, um, you know, there wasn't anything really talked about with the um, plane in Pennsylvania yet. But um, we couldn't. You know, we just couldn't believe it. We were overwhelmed. Um, we stopped because this was, we stopped at a ranger station on the way down the mountain. Um, so I could call my parents because we did not have cell phones then. And my parents were frantic when we talked to them. They weren't sure what time our flight was. So for all they knew, we were flying at the time. Um, so they were so happy to hear from us. And um, we ended up, um, staying in Hawaii for, uh, I think it was four or five extra days, which sounds glamorous, but unfortunately, there's no other way to get home other than to fly, unless we're going to start paddling a boat. So um, it was really unnerving flying home. Um, we were scared the whole time. The flight was packed with a lot of nervous people. So, um, but we did make it home. We made it home safely. And um, at that time, we lived outside of Washington, D.C. So, driving by the Pentagon and seeing, you know, the tragedy that took place there and the visible evidence of what happened um, was just, it's heartbreaking. So um, it was definitely a day that will always be remembered in my life. When I think back to September 11th, 2001, my sixth graders, I was teaching sixth grade, had just done some projects in the library the few weeks before. And so we were doing presentations. And there was a knock on my door and a colleague of mine who was in another grade level who had planning at the time came and said, there's been a terrible accident and a plane has struck the um, one of the Twin Towers in New York. And I thought that was horrible. I thought, what a freak accident. Then I got back to my classroom because the students were doing presentations. We were sent out an email to kind of be told what was happening. Uh, the principal said that at a certain time, we'd all tell the students that we had that way at one time, all the students in the school would find out. So, you know, you wouldn't find out in one class that then someone else would tell someone else when they went to the bathroom or the water fountain. Parents were, of course, coming to get their kids just because they wanted them to be close to them on such a traumatic day. We didn't know much of what was going on. Uh, we told them what we knew. Afterwards, most entertainment just kind of stopped. All the, the TV stations and radio stations were were covering news and it was on throughout the night. I remember that. And it was just numbing. I couldn't believe this happened to our country. I go back to work the next day and it's then I realized that I had a personal little connection to it. That summer, the summer of 2001, I had started a program through National Geographic. They uh, were helping teachers as we were. Uh, on the process of getting national board certifications. They brought in teachers from across the nation into a workshop. There was a man by the name of Joe Ferguson and he wanted to impact learning and help teachers and then of course help the students. And so I got a chance to you know, be there with the other teachers and Joe and we were looking forward to coming back halfway through the school year with our uh, materials to look at our videos and things we were gonna submit for our certification. And I received word from one of the other leaders in our group that um, National Geographic had a group of sixth graders from the Washington DC schools who were going to go on a trip to the Washington state area around Puget Sound and they were going on a field trip. And, and Joe was one of two people that was taking them. And all those students along with Joe and Ann, the other person's name was Ann, They'd been on the plane that left the um, Reagan National and crashed into the Pentagon. And so suddenly I knew someone 
who had been involved in this. Originally, it was just some kind of national tragedy that we all kind of felt, but suddenly I knew someone. In the days and weeks that would come out, um, I learned more things about Joe. And one of the things I learned about him was his favorite candy was Reese's peanut butter cups. So one of the things I try to do every year on 9-11 is have at least one of those Reese's peanut butter cups for Joe in salute to him. Hello students, my name is Mrs. Polkett and I'm here to share my connection with 9-11. It was my last year of my undergrad degree and I was living in Wisconsin and I happened to be working at a retail store that day. I didn't have class and I remember hearing about it happening and I remember that day, that was the day that a truck was delivered to my work and we had to unload the truck and get all the, um, the, the supplies in. And they said the mall is was is in a mall. The mall is closing, and we need to just quick everything off. And they closed the entire mall. And they closed malls around the entire country because they just simply didn't know where another attack might happen. And I remember getting home, and a family member told me you need to go fill your car with gas because gas prices are going to really spike. And while I didn't have anyone in New York City and any direct connections to that. It was very jarring and very unsettling and very scary because even though New York from Wisconsin was quite a, quite a ways away, you just didn't know where any, something else was going to happen. And then you knew something happened in D.C. at the Pentagon then. So, okay, so it's now on, it's on the East Coast, but where else could it be? An airport stopped. And like it's like the world just stopped because we just weren't sure what was going to be happening. And I did have, I do have a cousin who is a firefighter and an EMT and every year like there's she puts something up or is um having i want to say a celebration but a remembrance of 9-11 and it's something for those people in those professions that it there it's very dear to them because they lost comrades they lost people that were in their own profession so while i don't have a direct connection i see how it affects people in the firefighter and police force emt in those professions even today even though it's been 20 years so it's something that might be tricky for you because you weren't alive right um, but there are things in my life that i wasn't alive for that i can still appreciate the severity of and the impact of like Vietnam and Korea and World War II and World War I. I wasn't alive for those, but I can talk to family members and I can learn about them. So it's an opportunity for you to go home and say, hey, um, what, what, did, what was your life like on that day? How did it affect your life? And just learn more about your family members and learn their connection to it as well.